Hello friends, I am Amirun Munazami and today we are going to study the equivalent single layer theories. So let's start. So what is equivalent single layer theories? The equivalent single layer model are also called the smear layer laminate models. These models are based on an assumed global that is one for the whole laminate linear or non-linear distribution of the in-plane displacements or the transverse shearing stresses in the thickness directions. So in equivalent single layer theories, what we do? We model for a single plate the in-plane displacements. So in equivalent single layer theories, there are various categories. One is the classical laminated plate theory. We can see here. One is another is first order shear deformation theory. It is also equivalent single layer theories higher order shear deformation theories, refined plate theory, quasi three dimensional theory and simple first order shear deformation theory. These all theories are lying in the category of equivalent single layer theories or we can say smeared laminate models. Okay. So we will see all these one by one. So in equivalent single layer theories, these approaches considered all layers as one equivalent single anisotropic layer. So classical plate theory and the first order shear deformation theory are well known examples of the plate models with assumed global linear distribution. So the, the distribution of the displacement field will be globally linear, linear distribution. The so called higher order shear deformation theories are examples of plate models with assumed global non linear distribution. So, displacement fields would be non linear here for the higher order shear deformation theory. This assumption generally results in incompatible shearing stresses between adjacent layers. So, in higher order shear deformation theory, we can see the displacements are non linear. So, non linear variation would be there. So therefore, the, there would be incompatibility in the shearing stresses. If shearing strains are continuous throughout the lamina, so they, then the, due to the change in the material orientation or the material, uh, material properties from lamina to lamina, then there would be the uh, jump in the shearing stresses. So no continuity would be maintained. Therefore, it is mentioned that incompatible shearing stresses would be there uh, in higher order shear deformation theory if calculated from the constitutive equations. So now for uh, smeared laminate models or equivalent single layer theories, we can have these displacement field. So u of x, y, z is can be written as i equals to 0 to n u i z i. So this would be equals to u naught z0 plus u1 z to the power 1 plus u up to un zn. Similarly, v of xyz can be expanded as this v naught z naught plus v1 z1 plus so on vn zn. And similarly, w of xyz means transverse deflection would be j equals to 0 to m w i z i equals to this. So, we can see z 0 is here, we can see that z to the power 0, z to the power 0 is 1. So, we can replace it as 1, 1, 1, anything power 0 raised to the power 0 is 1. So, we can write finally u of x y z equals to u naught which is a function of x comma y plus u 1 z 1 plus u 2 z 2 plus u 3 z cube plus u up to u n z to the power n. Similarly, these where u naught is u naught of x y and u 1 is u 1 of x y. So, we can say that any function f of x y z of k where x y z of k would be u v w. So, k may be u, v or w, u, v, w. So, this 
so phi i x of y which is a function of phi of i of z now classical laminated plate assumptions so what are the assumptions we are going to study the first smeared laminate models are equivalent single layer theory esl theory so the simplest is the classical laminated plate theory and then we will study the first order shear deformation theory so classical laminated plate theory what its assumption no stretching or extensions are allowed in fibers normal to the mid plane transverse displacement w is a function of x and y that is strain along z direction thickness direction is zero so this assumption first assumption that no stretching or extensions are allowed in fiber if a plate is there if a plate is there then mm, suppose it is a mid plane x similarly the this side will be y and we are considering suppose it is z direction so no stretching or extensions are allowed in fibers normal to the mid plane so this is the if this is the mid plane then no stretching are allowed in vertical fibers means this vertical fibers means epsilon strain along z z is equals to 0 this is stated that the strain means no stretching are allowed in the vertical direction means z direction that is the strain along z is equals to 0 this is the conclusion from this first assumption so what is stated at sin zz is equals to 0 so what it mathematically gives if epsilon zz is 0 means epsilon zz is what del of w upon del z w is a function of x y z which is equals to 0 if this function is 0 what this implies that w is a function of x and y only not of z so if we if we partially differentiate with respect to z and it is equals to 0 then it states that w is a function of x and y only it is the first assumption now the second assumption what it states the plane sections remain plane before and after bending so before bending and after bending the plane sections remain plane so the displacement fields would be linear in plane is not linear in z coordinate thickness means u of x y z is a linear function is directly proportional to z to the power 1 is linear similarly v of x y z is also a linear function z to the power 1 not higher than 1 the third one plane sections remain normal or perpendicular to the mid plane before and after bending so plane sections remain normal or perpendicular to the mid plane before and after bending if it is perpendicular remain perpendicular after bending and before bending then what it states that there is no shear deformation occurs so no shear deformation means gamma xz equals to 0 and gamma yz is equals to 0 this assumption states this thing. so gamma xz equals to 0 so what this implies the shearing strains along x z equals to 0 and strain along y z equals to 0 so we will see one by one assumptions one no stretching are allowed in the thickness direction that is strain along z z equals to 
So challenge is equal to zero means partial derivative of W of x y z with respect to z is equal to zero. This implies that W is a function of x and y only. Now we will see the second assumptions. So from equivalent single layer theories, we have seen that our functions can be raised up to power u n of x y z to the power n. So here assumptions to what it states that in plane this means are linear through the thickness. So linear means we can see that our function should be a power of z of z to the power one only. So we will just take this much only and we'll discard these after this part. We will discard. So we will include up to linear. Terms only. So u of x y z equals to u not of x comma y plus u one of x y into z to the power one. Now, similarly, in v functions, v of x y z would be also same. So in plane this may are linear. So these would be the same like that only. Now assumption three. What is assumption three? Plane sections remain normal to the mid plane. That is. No transfer shear deformation occurs, or we can say gamma x z equals to zero and gamma y z equals to zero. What this implies that del u by del z plus del w by del x equals to zero. This implies that del u of x y z by del z is equals to nothing but minus of del w by del x. So. Del by del del z of this function we know u of x y z and we can stretch it u of x y z as u not of x y plus u one of x y into z to the power one as from assumptions two that assumptions two we got here that u of x y z is up to the linear terms only so we have included only the linear up to linear terms. Here also, in assumptions two for the uh, in y directions, v of x y z we have taken up to linear terms only. So therefore, here for u of x y z we have considered up to the linear terms u not of x y plus u one of x y z to the power one is equals to minus del w by del x. So from there, del of u not of x y by del z. So this is a function of x y only, and we are differentiating with respect to z. Therefore, it would be zero plus u one of x y. We are partially differentiating with respect to z. So del z by del z that would be one. So u one of x y is nothing but equals to del w by del x. Similarly, we will see v of x y z would be v not of x y minus z times del w by del y. So our functions would be u not of u of x y z equals to this, and v of x y z equals to v not of x y minus z del w by del y for classical laminated plate theory. We got the displacement speed from here, and also we got the w of x y z as w not of x y. So here that stated that epsilon z z hence epsilon z z is equals to zero from assumption one. So this implies that this is the plane strain conditions. Hence sigma z z is not equal to zero. If epsilon z z equals to zero, then sigma z z can be equal to zero from the Poisson's or constitutive equations or relations. But sigma z z do, do not contribute to the strain energy or variational. So for thin to medium thick plates, we know that our h is much much less than a. So another dimensions we can see that the thickness dimensions are much uh, smaller than the other two dimensions. So therefore, we assume h plane stress conditions also plane stress. Conditions. 
conditions. So here plane strain and plane stress conditions both are assumed. So from plane stress conditions what we get that we will also consider that sigma g g would be equals to 0. Hence, from assumptions of the classical laminated plate theory, we are having this u of x y z equals to u naught of x y minus z del w naught by del x, v of x y z equals to v naught of x y minus z del w naught by del y. Therefore, the strains would be epsilon x would be del epsilon x would be equals to del of u of x y z by del x. So, we will just put instead of del uh, u of x y z as u naught and del w uh, del uh, minus z times del w naught by del x. So, it will be del u naught by del x minus z times del 2 w naught by del x square. So, from here we will get the sigma x with the constitutive relations. Similarly, epsilon y we will get the sigma y from the constitutive relations and also gamma x y we will get the tau x y or sigma x y shear stresses from the constitutive relations with this strain. And the transverse strains are 0, we know that gamma x z equals to 0, gamma y z equals to 0 and epsilon g z equals to 0. Therefore, our tau x z is 0 tau y z is 0 and sigma z z equals to 0 from plane stress condition, plane stress conditions. These are 0 from the constitutive relations that g of gamma x z, g of gamma x z. So, these gamma x z is 0, so therefore it would be 0 gamma y z is 0, so this would be 0, but here sigma z z epsilon z z equals to 0, but sigma z z can't be 0 due to the Poisson's effect, it will have some values, but from the plane stress conditions, sigma z z is 0. So, here that is shown here, what we have just discussed in the last slide, how is this g 1 3 of x z and so on. The transfer shear stresses are 0 from the constitutive relations. Now, displacement and strains for the classical laminated plate theory. So, consider we will consider a plate of total thickness h, which is the total thickness of the plate is h. Here, it is exaggerated in this manner that the total thickness is capital a small h, composed of n orthotropic layers it may be 9, 10, 20, 30, any number of uh, lamina. So, orthotropic levels with the principal material coordinates x1, x2 and x3 means that each lamina, if we take the lamina 1 suppose, this is the first lamina. So, the fibers are oriented in, in this manner. We will see, we will see that if it is the fiber direction, we will say x1 direction and normal to the fiber direction is x2 direction. And this is the lamina 1. So, here we will now see that we will make another lamina also here. Let me make another lamina.
lamina 2 here, lamina 3 here. So, suppose we are considering the mid plane as this. So, our reference would be x coordinate, similarly y coordinate and maybe z coordinate. So, each lamina can be oriented in any angles. So, what is the theta? How we will calculate theta? So, here it is telling that thus any kth lamina oriented in the angle theta to the laminate coordinate x is the x, the z axis is considered positive, the kth layer is located between the point z equals to theta. So, our angle is from x to x y to x1 is the theta. So, inclination between x axis means the reference axis of the plate, laminated plate and the x1 is the direction of the fibers of the kth layer of the lamina. Any layer of the lamina what it is making with the angle x that would be the theta. And here also it, it is shown that from the mid plane, uh, the coordinate z1, z2, z3, because first we, we are giving our first number for the lamina is from top. So, we are considering that from the mid plane, the distance of the top is z1, then the, from the top of the second layer would be z2 and top of the third layer would be z3 and so on. So, displacement and strength for the classical laminated plate theory. So, it is the simplest equivalent single layer laminated plate theory. We should know that the CLPT classical laminate plate theory is the simplest equivalent single layer theory. So, only three unknown field variables are there. Why we are telling three unknown field variables? As we can see from u of x, y, z is u naught of x, y, z. We can just neglect right now t because we are not taking the dynamics consideration here. So, we will not talk about time. So, we are considering that u of x y z is equal to u naught of x comma y minus z times del w naught by del x and del w naught by del y. So, u naught, v naught and w naught. These are the three unknowns to us and this is del w naught by del x. If w naught is known then we can so, three independent, three unknown variables are there, three unknowns, which is u naught, v naught and w naught. If we get these three, we can find any way these three values u naught, v naught and w naught, then we can find out the displacement at any point in the plate, because we can see from here that u of x, y, z can be directly uh, get from these equations. So, if these three variables are known to us, then we can find the u of u, v and w within the plate, any point in the plate, any point in the plate we can find this. So, displacement is strange for classical laminated plate theory, where u naught, v naught and w naught are the displacements along the coordinate lines of a material point on the x y plane. So, it is the mid plane stretching or mid plane displacement. So, once the mid plane displacements u naught, v naught, w naught are known, the displacements of any arbitrary point x y z in the three dimensional continuum can be determined using the equation 1. So, here the strains are shown epsilon x x is del u by del x which is written here, del v by del y and these values, gamma x y is del u by del y plus del v by del x. So, we have, we can find it as this. And epsilon x x, we can also write these values, we can substitute as this as epsilon naught x x and these values as epsilon 1 of x x. Similarly, 
epsilon naught of y y and these values as epsilon one of y y so on. So here we have just taken as epsilon naught x x plus z times epsilon one x x epsilon naught y y plus z times epsilon one y y and so on. These epsilon naught x x epsilon naught y y and gamma naught x y are the membrane strains. These are called the membrane strains because these are due to the stretching. And epsilon one x x epsilon y y y and gamma one x y are the flexural loss bending strains. Where epsilon naught x x is this, we have seen this. So once the mid plane displacements u naught v naught w naught are known, the strains at any arbitrary point x y z in the plate can be computed using equations three and four. So last three and four we are, this this is the equation four and this is the equation three. So if we know that equation three and four, so we can just find the value. So from equation three, it can be seen that all strain components vary linearly. So equation three, we will see that this epsilon x x varies. This is the epsilon naught x x plus z times epsilon x x f one. So it varies linearly through the thickness. In the thickness direction, the variation of the strain is linear. So if there is any plate, we can see that if there is any plate. And this is the z direction. So, what it states, the, the values would be in the z direction. It would be linear, z to the power one only. So, the strain would vary, very linearly. Linear variation of the strain would be there. Linear strain. Linear strain. So here it is stated that the variation of the strain components vary linearly through the laminate thickness, and they are independent of the material variations through the laminate thickness. So we can see from here that the strains are independent of the material lamina. So in which layer or which lamina materials we are talking, it is independent of that. It is exactly it is linearly varying. Now lamina constitutive equation. So the linear constitutive relations for kth orthotropic lamina in principal material coordinates can be written as sigma one, sigma two, and sigma x to the with the in the kth layer is equals to z times q one one, q one two zero, q one two, q two two zero, zero zero q six six for the kth lamina into epsilon one, epsilon two, and epsilon two. So here It is the lamina constitutive relations. Lamina constitutive relations means here that any one layer of the lamina, if we are having any lamina, it is the lamina one, suppose, and it is oriented like this. The fibers are oriented in this manner. So it is the fiber axis. We can see one axis, or x one axis, or two axis, or x two axis. Then we can have sigma one, sigma two, and sigma six. Sigma six is nothing but it is the shearing in plane shear in plane shear stress shear stress. Within one two plane only. Similarly, if sine one six would be the in plane shear strain, shear strain, and if sine one one would be the strain in the fiber direction at sine one one, and similarly the strain in this direction at sine two two would be the perpendicular to the fiber direction. Where q11 equals to, so qij of k are the plane stress reduces stiffness, 
and are known in terms of the engineering constant. So we can find out this Q values of for the kth layer. Q11 of kth layer is Q1 to the power kth layer 1 minus Q12 of kth layer. So these all are for the kth layer. We can just write all the kth layer formula that these are for the kth layer of the Poisson's ratio and Young's modulus. For the kth layer. So engineering constants are e e e1, nu1, two, nu2, two, one. These are g1, two. These are the engineering constants. So we can find the q11, q12, q22, and q6 is in terms of the engineering constants in the lamina constitutive relations. So lamina is the single. You know, classical laminated plate will what? Since the laminate is made of several orthotropic layers. With material axis oriented arbitrarily with respect to the laminate coordinates, the constitutive equations of each layer must be transformed to the laminate coordinates. Hence, we have seen in the last equation that this was this was the constitutive equations in the lamina only. But if it is arranged with the laminate, so laminate axis would be this x axis and this would be the y axis and this would be the z axis so then if you find if we have to find sigma x x sigma y y sigma z z or sigma sorry sigma x y then this stresses must be transformed because these stresses lamina wise stresses was in in its own lamina in the fiber directions so we have to transform these stresses in the x and y coordinates for the plate. So here it is written that since the laminate is made of several orthotropic layers with the material axis oriented arbitrarily with respect to the laminate coordinates. When we are talking the laminate means the whole plate. Laminate is the whole plate and lamina is the single layer. These are the lamina. These are the lamina. We can say that this is the lamina 1 lamina 2, lamina 3, this is lamina 4 and these combined is laminate. When it is combined together then it is called the laminate or plate, complete plate, laminated plate or we can say laminated plate here. Okay. Then the constitutive equations of the each layer must be transformed to the laminate coordinates x, y, z. So we will see it here. So now this constitutive equations for laminate are written here, which is transformed for the any kth layer sigma x, x, sigma y, and y and sigma x, y as equals to z times q11 bar, q12 bar, q16 bar, q12 bar, q22 bar, q2, q16 bar, q26 bar, q66 bar into for the kth layer into epsilon xx, epsilon yy and gamma xy. So stresses are all, also we can see that these stresses are also g to the power 1 means linear. So stresses are also linear throughout the thickness, through the throughout thickness of each layer. However, it will have different linear variation in different layers because as the materials Q11 bar, Q12 bar will changes for the lamina by lamina, then also the stress value would be changes with the linear variation, different linear variation in different layer. And now Q, where Q11 bar would be equals to Q11 cos to the power 4 theta plus D sin square theta cos square theta and Q2 to the sin to the power 4 theta. So these are the relations given with the transformation matrix. So here theta is angle measured anti-clockwise from x coordinate to the x1 coordinate. Now equations of motion for classical laminated plate theory. So transverse strain are identically zero in the classical laminated plate theory. From our assumptions it was zero. No transverse shear stresses are obtained from the constitutive equations. And in actual but in actual what happens the transverse shear stresses are present. We know that it is present to keep the plate in equilibrium. 
because if there is any vertical load then it must balance that therefore there must be the stresses for balancing it so these stress components may be specified on the boundary and thus the transverse stresses do not enter in the virtual strain energy expression but they must be accounted for in the boundary conditions and the equilibrium of the forces so what it states that sigma xz sigma yz and sigma zz these do not contribute to the strain energy function but in actual it is present there at the point so the governing equations are derived using the principle of first variation of the total potential energy so the strain energy is stored we know that the formula for the strain energy is half times volume integral of stress of sigma ij into epsilon ij strain into dv volume integral similarly work potential is negative of the integral of q not w not dx dy so what is it is stating that we have assumed a plate where a load is applied q not of xy okay so it will due to this load there would be the work this will work as negative of the q not w not dx dy this work done would be there and the strain energy stored would be half of sigma ij into epsilon ij volume integral so therefore the total potential energy would be the sum of the strain energy plus work potential and the we know that the sum of the strain energy is half times if you will just open sigma ij and epsilon ij so sigma xx xy epsilon xx sigma yy xy epsilon yz plus sigma xy gamma xy sigma xz sigma yz and Uh, sigma zz all those contributions would be zero and dx dy dz minus q into w not dx dy this is from the work potential we we these values so first variation of the total potential energy must be equals to zero so that should be equals to half of this value so half of sigma x into first variation of epsilon xx plus sigma yy first variation of epsilon yy plus sigma xy delta gamma xy of first variation of gamma xy volume integral minus q into first variation of w not d where we know that the first, uh, delta of epsilon xx of first variation of epsilon xx is nothing but delta of epsilon not xx plus g times delta of epsilon xx for 1 similarly epsilon yy and gamma x y has been shown and now we put the value in the equation as we have seen so we will put these that values here suppose we give the equation a name so we will put these values suppose this is equation b so we will put these equation b values in equation a so it would be like this sigma x is the delta epsilon Not x x sigma y y delta epsilon not y y plus sigma x y into delta gamma not x y plus sigma x x z times delta epsilon x x one plus sigma y y z times delta epsilon y y one and this sigma x y z times delta gamma x y one integral d z minus q into delta w not d x d y. Now we can see that delta epsilon not x x is independent of g function so we can take it out outside then minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 with respect to dz the sigma xx would get integrated so what this value will give this would become nxx so nxx what we what is it it is nothing but the integration of sigma xx with respect to dz from minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 this is nxx so here we have written nxx delta epsilon x not xx plus nyy similarly nyy would be also sigma yy dz integral so we have written it nxy delta gamma not xy plus also we know that sigma xx into z so mxx is nothing but integration from minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 sigma xx into z dz this would give mxx similarly myy would be 
integration of this sigma y y with respect to z and so on so m y y and m x y minus 2 u we get these values and we have written here n x x n y y and x y is nothing but sigma x x sigma y y sigma x y integrated from minus x by 2 plus x by 2 dz similarly m x x m y y and m x y would be equal to minus x by 2 to plus x by 2 integrated with sigma x x sigma y y sigma x y z dz so virtual strains are known in terms of the virtual displacements so delta epsilon not x f in del of del u not by del x where it is known in terms of the displacement functions u not so we will open these with u not v not and here w not delta gamma x y and we will substituting equation 20 in equation 19 so it is equation 20 and this is equation 19 sorry this is equation 19 suppose this is equation 19 so we will just put these values at challen x x naught in terms of the u naught function v naught function and so on w naught function so these values 20 values at challen naught x x in terms of u naught v naught we will just fit in equation 19 and here we will it we will get this n x x into delta del u naught by del x plus n y y into delta del v naught by del y plus so on and these must be equals to 0 finally. So after applying the Green's theorem we will apply there the Green's theorem we get the Euler Lagrange equations with some boundary conditions and the Euler Lagrange equations are this del n x x by del x plus del n x y by del y equals to 0 del n x y by del x plus del n y y by del y equals to 0 and del 2 mx by del x square plus 2 times del 2 mx y by del x del y plus del 2 m y by del y equals equals to q naught where q naught is the transverse load applied at the top of the plate so these are the three equations of motions we get and we called it as Euler Lagrange equation so now laminate consecutive equations n x x n y y and n x y that is k equals to 1 to n g k g to power k plus 1 sigma x x sigma y y sigma x y dz because we can write this minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 sigma x x dz okay so we can also write this as summation of k bar of 1 to n integrate zk gk to z plus 1 sigma x x of k d so here it is shown here that these values sigma x x sigma y can be written like this q i j bar of the kth layer and stand for this value So, an xx, an yy, and an xy, when it would be integrated, these values would get integrated. So, it will become this value. So, we can say that aij would be equals to integration of zk to zk plus 1 qij bar of k dz so qij bar of k is independent of that function so we can take it out for the kth layer and it is also equals to 1 to n here summation of k equals to 1 to n qij of k into zk plus 1 minus Z. If it is integrated with respect to dz, so it would be outside because it is independent of the function z. So qij would be outside and zk plus 1 minus zk would be the function. If this integrated, we will get aij. Similarly, b11, b12, b16 will get bij as 1 to 
एन वी के वी और के प्लस वन टू आई जे बार ऑफ के इन टू जी डी जी सो अगेन एक्वल्स टू वन टू एन इट वुड बी क्यू आई जे बार ऑफ के वुड बी आउटसाइड द इंटीग्रेशन फंक्शन एंड देन इट वुड गेट इंटीग्रेटेड सो हाफ वुड कम आउटसाइड हाफ ऑफ जेड टू दी पावर के प्लस वन माइनस जेड स्क्वायर के दिस वुड बी द बी आई जे सो हियर इट इज शोन दैट ए आई जे बी आई जे डी आई जे इज नथिंग बट माइनस एच बाई टू टू प्लस एच बाई टू इंटीग्रेटेड क्यू आई जे बार वन जी जी स्क्वायर और ए आई जे इट इज इंटीग्रेटेड विद इज टू वन मल्टीप्लीकेशन बी आई जे फॉर जी एंड डी आई जे फॉर जी स्क्वायर डी सो वी विल गेट दिस फॉर के इक्वल्स टू वन टू इन्फिनिटी जी के टू और वन टू सॉरी एन लेयर एन एथ लेयर इट बी इंटीग्रेटेड सो ए आई जे वुड बी दिस बी आई जे वुड बी दिस वैल्यू एंड बी आई जे वुड बी इंटीग्रेटेड एंड इन जी इक्वल्स टू वन बाई थ्री के इक्वल्स टू वन टू एन टू आई जे बार ऑफ के लेयर जेड के प्लस वन क्यूब माइनस जेड के क्यूब सो वी विल गेट दिस डी आई जे फ्रॉम हियर सो इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिस्प्लेसमेंट सो हियर वी हैव सीन इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ फंक्शन नाउ वी विल जस्ट पुट द वैल्यूज of the strain function in terms of displacement function so we will get this del u not by del x del u not by this values in terms of the displacement functions we will get similarly mx x and y y and s m x y we will get in terms of displacement functions again so the equations of motion in equations 23 can be expressed Just in terms of the displacements, u not, v not, w not, the substituting force and moment resultants from equation 26 and 27. So this is the equation 23a. That is del n x by del x plus del n x y by del y equals to zero. Similarly, del n x y by del x plus del n y y by del y would be equals to zero. That would be 23 equation b. And also the third one would be del two m x by del x square plus two times del two m x y by del x del y plus del two m y by del y square minus q should be equals to zero. So this would be twenty three equation C. So these were the Euler Lagrange equations we have obtained. so substituting values of nx and nxy from equation 26 and 23a to to, to these equations nx y ny y nx nxy if we substitute these nx and nxy from here these values and these mx values to this function nx nxy n x y m x m x y we will just substitute these values so we will get del by del x in this manner now these are the calculations would be complex to have all these values so it will take some time so what we have what i have done i have just reduced to reduce the complexity of the above lagrangian equations of motions we are consider our laminate as especially orthotropic laminate so what happens when we assume our especially orthotropic laminate then the bij would be equals to zero means the coupling matrix it is the coupling matrix bending extension or flexural extension coupling matrix would be equals to zero so there would be no bending and extension coupling here in the especially orthotropic laminate and also d16 and d26 would be equals to zero so there would be no bending and twisting curvature and hence we also know that u not 
of xy and v not of xy would be equals to zero because we have applied only the transverse load here. We have applied only the transverse load q not of xy, and there is no coupling between the bending and stretching, and also the bending and twisting. So there would be no uh, extension or no mid plane displacements. U not and V not would be equal to zero. So if this is if this is zero, then we know that epsilon not x x and epsilon not y y will be equal to zero. So epsilon not x x and epsilon not y y, not y y and gamma not x y. These are the membrane strains. Those would be the membrane strains would also be zero. So finally, we get the governing equations for especially orthotropic laminates as d11 del to the power 4w0 by del x to the power 4 plus 2 times d12 plus 2 times d66 del 4w0 by del x square del y square plus d22 del 4w0 by del y4 minus q0 equals to 0. We get finally this simplest equilibrium equations for the governing equations for. Especially orthotropic laminates. Especially orthotropic laminates. Orthotropic laminates. So, in the next lecture, what we will do? We will solve problem problem of classical laminate plate theory with. Especially orthotropic laminates of zero degree, ninety degree, and zero degree stacking sequence of the plates, and then we will solve a code. We will make in the MATLAB. So we will make a MATLAB code and find the results of the displacements and stresses.